And welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another edition on Super Bowl Sunday of <coughs> Michaela Loves Gymnastics. How are you guys doing today? Um, it is February 2nd, 2020, and we are doing a video. Now, of course, you know, it's, um, today is, oops, sorry, you guys, today is, um, Sunday, February 2nd, 2020, which is Super Bowl Sunday in America, and, um, which means, you know, a lot of the NCAA competitions haven't happened yet. But the ones that have happened, let's talk about it. Let's talk about some of the stuff going on in elite gymnastics. And for our main topic of conversation tonight, we are going to focus, shine the spotlight on one of my favorites, Tasha Schweiker. So let's get into the video. Let's start off by saying that um, in the NCAA right now, too huge at least in my opinion, two huge upsets has happened. Um, LSU lost to Alabama, which is surprising as heck to me. Um, I personally think, even though, um, well, before this competition, Alabama was ranked seventh, and I think UCLA was ranked sixth. I think UCLA is the far and away superior team. I think they are way better than Alabama. Just potential in the girls that they have. But Alabama did their thing. And UCLA were making mistakes. And they had falls. And so Alabama was able to get them in this competition. Which is fine. Um, Kaya Johnson is UCLA best hope in the future. She is a superstar. She can constantly compete at your Chinko double twist that looks amazing. Her bars look good. Her beam, she scored a 10 against Florida on beam. It's amazing. And Clark clearly exercises her best event. So let's not sleep on Miss Kyra Johnson. Kai Rivers is okay. I don't think she, I don't, I just think UCLA is a little bit weak on bars because Kai Johnson. Even though she's great on bars, she keeps giving up these little deductions that need to be worked out before postseason. Alana Shonikova, I'm not saying her name right, but we all know Alana. Girl, if you don't take this dang on uh, Maloney out of your routine, like if you don't take this dang on Maloney out of your routine, I don't understand why do you compete this. You don't do it that well in college level. And then you're trying to do a big combination of a Maloney to a Takacha reverse head to a Pat Soto. Like that's too hard. That's too hard for NCAA gymnastics. I'm sure it's completely within your capability of doing this, but you don't need to. Just start off on a high bar. Do the Takachev to the pack. Do a toe circle half turn. Even in elite gymnastics, Alana, your dismounts were very iffy. So I don't, I think right now you should do a blind, uh, full pirouette to a double back until you get your feet in the game in um, college level gymnastics. Um, and UCLA was defeated by Washington. I believe it's Washington State, which is surprising, but not really. If you look, look UCLA. I love Mars. I love um, all these girls, but this front walkover to a bat tuck is just not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. Even in elite gymnastics, it's not gonna happen. It's so hard to get that combination credited. And I just think for UCLA, I know they're trying to be creative, and that's great. But they need to be a lot more, they need to pick better skills. And I think both for Mars, Nora, and a whole bunch of other girls, backhand spring, layout, step out. 
that's what the combination needs to be. Or front aerial to a front handspring. Or something a lot easier. It's just not needed. And as you can see, girls who do a lot less difficulty in college get bigger scores. Um, my Florida... My Florida team is still doing their thing. Um, I still like UCLA over Florida, but right now Florida is just kicking butt, kicking butt and taking names. And so is OU, and so is Denver. It's like the landscape of NCAA gymnastics is changing so much, which is good because there's a lot more teams than it used to be. Back in the days when I used to pay attention to college gymnastics in the um, – late 90s, early 2000s, I can't lie, I, I kind of got hit on the NCAA kind of late. Um, I didn't really start watching the NCAAs until like around 98, 99, like really consistently. I used to watch it when I could find it on TV, but actually like paying it attention like 98, 99, well, not really because I'm really going to say I really haven't like 2000, 2003 really when I really started paying attention to it. But, um, the girls used to do a lot more difficulty. It was so much harder to get a 10. And now, it's like, with college, you have to do the simple skills well. Like, Alana has built-in deductions on her shaft. I don't understand why Didi Rose, um, that's not, is it Didi Rose? Whoever, whoever is the UCLA head coach, I don't understand why. This is her college routine. She needs to water it down or change some skills. Um, actually, I wouldn't let Alana do bars yet. I think Alana will be better off for her um, confidence and for her getting into NCAA level gymnastics to do beam and floor. But that's just my personal opinion. Um... Congratulations to Jasmine Fober for um, coming back from her injury and doing a Yurchenko full as an exhibition. That's great for her. Um, she was one of the girls who had a shot of getting that fourth plate, that fifth um, spot in um, 2016. But I think she got hurt in 2016 and just went straight to college, which is a great decision for her. Um, what else? So, yeah, those are all the competition I, competitions I really paid attention to. I want to give a shout-out to Jordan Weaver. You're doing a, a amazing job with your team. Your team went from one of the no-name teams to one of the top teams in college gymnastics. And, yes, it's because you're a coach. But over the next few years, you're going to get some Olympians. You're going to get some junior Olympians. And this team is going to be very competitive. Congratulations to you, Miss Jordan Weaver, for making that happen. Um, I can't lie. One of my favorite teams is Denver. Denver is great. Denver, Auburn, like, there's a lot more depth in the NCAA than there ever has been. There was always this top tier of gymnasts, the top tier of teams, which was Alabama, Georgia. Um, yeah, UCLA was one of the top tier teams. Utah, and then slowly Oklahoma came up. Um, UCLA came up. Um, for a while there, UCLA, I'm not, I'm sorry, LSU came up. For a while there, UCLA was the most dominant team. And then Oklahoma came up, and I think Oklahoma is the dominant team now. Um, it's clear to me that it's going to be very hard for them to be beat. They're going to have to beat themselves this year at Nationals. Um, Reagan Smith looks fantastic. Maggie Nichols looked fantastic. Um, Anastasia Webb looked fantastic. UCLA, I mean, the, um, the Sooners have a deep well of talent to pick from. And that's exciting to watch. So that's my opinions of the NCAA for so far this week. You might get another video or next week. You know, we might come back to it. Now let's talk about dang on 
in um, elite gymnastics and all the this is it. This is the time, you guys. This is what we've been waiting for for the last four years. Um, at the American Cup, we're going to see Morgan Hurd and Kayla Del Cello, which is going to be very exciting to see this competition between these two. We're going to see a whole bunch of other gymnasts from around the world, but I'm talking about the Americans right now. And actually, at Stuttgart, we're going to see Suni. And we're going to actually see what this bar team is going to look like. <laughs> is she going to do <coughs> the Nabs half and get that named after her? Or is she going to do the Pi Yeager half and get that named after her? Um, what is this bar team going to look like, Miss Suni Salee? Um, there's rumors that Simone is going to Tokyo Cup, which I think would be great for Simone to compete in Tokyo. But Birmingham Cup, I really would like them to send either Grace or Leanne. Um, and we have a whole bunch of other competitions to look for. We have Jesselo, which I think that should be Riley. Big standout as an individual all-arounder. Maybe Kara Eaker. We have um, Pat Rims. Pacific Rim Cup. Uh, I don't know if it's Cup or it's just the Pacific Rim Championships. We have that coming up. We have um, Woga, which just happened, which Sky Blakely dominated. Like, and threw up one of the biggest scores. It's coming up. Um, I don't know what competition this was that um, Angelina competed in and the um, the um, Vila, um, the talented star of the Italian teams compete. I don't know what competition there is, but if you look up on YouTube, um, there's videos circulating around of them competing at this competition. I have no idea what it is. Um... So yeah, Elite Gymnastics has started. The season has started and it's on fire. Um, I'm really the I'm looking I'm more looking forward to who's gonna make the USA team more than I'm actually looking forward to the actual Olympics, if that makes any sense to anybody. Um This team is gonna be hard. So many people aren't going to make this team <laughs> that it's going to be devastating, you guys. It's going to be truly devastating. Who is not going to make it to the Olympics this year? Um, what else is going on in the league gymnastics? Um, let's talk about this. Belana Horkina released her memoirs. I don't know when she released it, but she did release it. And she made some horrible comments about the American gymnasts, how they don't love the sport, how they just are in it for the medals. And then when they retire, they get fat. What she said was the fat start accumulating and they no longer can compete in the sport. And it was horrible. But let's, let's get one thing clear. If Spelana Marquina would have won the Olympics in 1996, she would have retired in 1997. If Spelana Marquina would have won the Olympics in 2000, she would have retired in 2000. Um, she needs to stop acting like... She, this is what, another reason why I think Simone is going to always be better than you. Simone did it. She went to the Olympics last Olympic cycle in 2016, won a bunch of gold medals and a bronze medal, and still came back to the sport. Gabrielle Douglas won the Olympic Games and the team competition, and she still came back to the sport. Ali Raisman won the floor, a bronze on beam, a gold in the team competition, and she still came back to the sport. You came back to the sport because you were disappointed with your results from every past Olympic Games and you felt like you still had more to give. Whereas these other girls, they had successes and still chose to do the sport. So everything you're saying is just a hypocrite. I still love you. You're still one of my favorite gymnasts of all times. But Horkina, let's keep it real. If you would have been successful, there's no way in heck you would have continued on. Just no way. Just no way. Um, 
I'm trying to think of something. I, 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 I'm forgetting something. Oh, okay. So let's go on to our main topic of Tasha Schweiker. Look, I think of myself as a Tasha Schweiker fan, but clearly I need to step my game up because there's so much about her that I just did not know. Like, I knew Tasha went to the NCAA, but I thought she competed for one year and got hurt and stopped competing. But little that I know was Tasha Schweiker, I have to do more research on it. I was told, I was, you know what, let me look it up now on my other phone. Was Tasha Schweiker the NCAA champion in the year 2008? Looking it up on my other phone, you guys. Yep, Tasha Schrocker won. Tasha Schrocker was the 2008 NCAA champion. Followed by Ashley Postel. Wow. And Tasha Schrocker won uneven bars. Tasha Schrocker had an amazing NCAA career that I need to catch up on, you guys. I definitely need to catch up on it because I never knew this. I thought... After the first year, I thought she was hurt, and I didn't know she continued, but Tasha Schreiber won, and she won the NCAA title as an all-arounder in 2005. I believe that was her freshman year. So Tasha Schreiber won the national championships. Now, let's look at this career of Tasha Schreiber, you guys. In 2000, Tasha Schreiber bumped up all of her routines by a lot. She was doing a double layout on floor. I know she, I didn't realize she did it at Olympic trials. I just thought she did it once at the Olympics and never did the double layout again, but she did a double layout at the Olympic trials. <clears throat> she was doing a 9.9 .9 and a 9.8 vault. She had a 10.0 star value on bars and she had, uh, I think a 9.8 star value on beam. And I was wondering, I always wonder why Bella picked her over other girls, but if you look at her start values and what she was doing, yeah, she should have made the team. It, it made all her scores at Olympic trials were ridiculous. Tasha Schreiker definitely should have been, not just been on the team, she should have been selected on the team the first go round. Like, vault, floor, Team USA didn't need her on bars, but vault and floor, they really needed people, especially since Vanessa Adler wasn't I have to be very careful what I say about Vanessa Adler. I know. <laughs> Two things, you know, you gym fans don't play about is the Russians and Vanessa Adler. So, she, through Vanessa Adler's mistakes, yes, it makes perfect sense why Tasha Schweiker was selected for the team when Morgan, her, when Morgan White got hurt. She shouldn't have been named an alternate. She should have been on the team in the first place. Um, Tasha Schweiker has an amazing gymnastics career. She was the two-time national champion in 2001 and 2002. She came in second place in 2003. She won a world championship gold medal with the team in 2003. She won an Olympic bronze medal in 2000. And she was the alternate who should have been named to the team in 2004. She went to the NCAA and she was the 2008 NCAA national champion. She was the 2005 NCAA national champion. Like Tasha Schweiker, yeah, you deserve everything that you, like I always thought that you was lucky, but you're not. You, you are one of the best American gymnasts that we've seen by your results. Um, she did very well in the 2001 World Championships where she led the team to a bronze medal. Like, yeah, Tasha Schrecker has an amazing 
breath in me. And that can never be taken away from her. And everybody needs to put some respect on my girl's Tasha's name. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're 20 minutes deep into this video. So those are my opinions for this week. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Michaela Loves Gymnastics. Thank you, my gym fans. Follow me on Instagram at Michaela Loves Gymnastics. Follow me on Twitter at Loves Gymnastics. Follow me on um, those two social media platforms. We're working on other platforms. If you want to help your girl out, you can always send your girl a cash app. It is um, um, the money sign Michaela M A K A Y eight one three. And your girl is trying to get a nice little camera, a nice little background set up, some lights or whatever. So, you know, send your girl a cash app and you know help your girl out. Um, thank you, everybody, for my subscribers. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And see you next week.